Hey everyone, this is Joe Gamble back again. And in this video, I'm gonna show you in super succinct manner how I utilize the power station for at home recording situations where I have to be really quiet. Uh, and it's super easy to do once you understand a few basic things. So let's just hop into it. Okay, so I plug in my guitar. Then we plug the guitar into the amplifier. Okay, now what I do is I take an unbalanced instrument cable and I take the line out of the power station all the way to this complex that we have going on here. So let me explain what's happening. Um, I always run this Strymon in line because I really like the sound and I'm recording it a lot, so I just leave it here. Um, if I wasn't using this to record, I would probably just take the balanced out of the power station and run it into uh, input one of my interface. However, because this is my setup, I take this unbalanced uh, line out of the power station, run it to the input of my Strymon, and then I get a nice stereo split into my interface, and now we can talk about what's happening inside the computer. So now that we're inside the computer with our signal, we have to consider the chain that we're running so far. So we've gone from our guitar into our amp, into the power station, into our interface, what piece of a normal guitar rig are we missing in this setup? It's the speaker cabinet. And it turns out that the speaker cabinet is an essential ingredient in the soup, okay? So once we're in the computer, we have to use some sort of a digital representation of a speaker cabinet, or we wind up with a guitar tone that sounds like this. All right, so digital cab representation, replication, what is that? Uh, you've probably heard these things referred to as IRs, uh, which is short for impulse responses. Um, cab IRs, cab sims, you know, it's all the same basic stuff. Um, but just like we don't need to understand how electricity works to be able to flip a light switch and enjoy artificial light in our living spaces, um, it's beyond the scope of this video to explain where IRs come from and how they're made. We just want to understand how to employ them in our projects so we can get up and running and making music as quickly as possible. IRs or impulse responses are saved as normal ordinary wave files uh, and there's a million different places that you can find them for free online. Um, Celestian has some and Google's your friend and Bob's your uncle. Uh, but in order to be able to use these within your recording projects, we're going to need to use what's called an IR loader as a plug-in within the track that we're looking to record guitar to. So as far as IR loaders go, um, there's a lot of them out there, but one that a lot of people seem to like to use is free. Um, by a Lancaster Audio called Pulse. I've never used it, but um, you know I'm within Logic, and so I just use the stock reverb plugin Space Designer to load my IRs. Uh, but you know, go ahead and search it up and knock yourself out. There's a ton of different options out there, and they're all fine. Okay, so now we're within our DAW environment. We're inside of Logic, um, and I've soloed out all the other tracks. So we're looking at this one lone rhythm guitar track. Um, and so I don't have any IR loaded right now. And so we'll just listen to uh, what I recorded, the un ir version. It sounds like this. So crispy, golden, delicious DI guitar sound that we want to mitigate as quickly as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over and uh, in our plugin stack, we're gonna um, set up our IR loader. Um, because I'm in Logic, um, and this is the way I normally do it, I just use the stock reverb plugin sound designer, or space designer rather. Um, so I'll load that sucker up. Um, hopefully you recognize this uh, GUI. And so in this window here, this is where uh, if you click here, you get the option to load an IR. So I'll click that and uh, it'll pull up on my hard drive already. Um, where I've stored a bunch of uh, IRs that I got from Celestian. And uh, most quality IRs that you see um, in, in the file name, you're gonna get all the information that you need to know. So we can see G12M Greenback, that's the speaker that was used, uh, 412 Cab, and then uh, Royer 421 SM57 Mix. Uh, so, um, you know, you can, Choose whichever one you think um, you know will work for your situation, but I'm just gonna choose this one for right now. Load that sucker up. Um, it's worth mentioning, I don't know if Pulse works this way, but uh, within uh, Space Designer, because it's a, a reverb plugin, you have the option to uh, blend in dry signal as well as wet, and uh, we do not want the dry signal, because that's the crispy sound. So get rid of that. Um, 
null that completely and just leave it all wet because that's where we're going to get the ir sound from um, and that's what's desirable so now once that's loaded um, you'll hear this i'll play the before and then i'll turn on the plug-in and you'll hear it goes from crispy to uh sounds like it's actually um, being run through a cabinet so three four <laughs> All right, so that's the quick and easy on how to get signal out of your power station into your computer and get up and making music as quickly as possible. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting aside for all the tracks that I laid down, the power station wasn't even turned on. because I'm not powering a cab and I'm not using uh, the power section or, or boosting with the power station. I'm only utilizing the reactive load uh, for the silent recording. So that's kind of an interesting aside. So hopefully this made sense. Um, if anything was confusing or you have other questions, just leave a comment below and we'll respond as quickly as possible. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon if you want to see more of this stuff as soon as it comes out. And uh, other than that, we'll see you in the next video, and thanks for tuning in. Bye.